I really don't know how to evaluate that game critically. I had a really, really hard time caring about this game um, after what happened to John Tavares, and it's, there's not really an update um, on him. I mean, he's 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 in a hospital. Um, I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to speculate anything. Um, we'll just have to wait to get an update for when we do. I thought Toronto had a good second period. The third period was pretty much a toss-up. Yeah, the special teams, the, the, the Leaf power play, the Leaf uh, the penalty kill was strong in this game, uh, but three delay game penalties, three delay game penalties, make those go away. The most frustrating thing about losing to the Montreal Canadiens is not having Carey Price play well. I want him to play well. I want these games to be entertaining. I want these games to be close. I want to beat the other team when they're at their best. No excuses. The frustrating part about losing to the Montreal Canadiens is that they've shown their hand, their entire hand, every single trick that they could possibly have up their sleeve, they have shown you in the 10 games that they have played you this season. The Toronto Maple Leafs are a talented team. They can make stuff up on the fly. And there was enough line combinations tonight that what video are you going to look at to prepare for that if you're Montreal? There were 27 different line combinations that the Toronto Maple Leafs used tonight. If they would have won this game, it would have been an absolute miracle. But like I said, they've shown you their hands. They've shown you what's up their sleeves. They're going to run a 1-2-2 ship style formation in the neutral zone. They're going to take away the center of the ice. You got to drive wide with speed and cut back into the middle or be willing to dump the puck in and go work for it, right? You got to really attack those defenders on the back wall. You're not going to beat the Montreal Canadiens with stretch passes. That is not the game plan. Don't do it. You're going to beat them with speed. You're going to beat them with good puck movement. You're going to beat them with short, crisp passes to open up lanes to be able to attack them where they're most vulnerable. They rely on their structure. And if you can attack their structure, they're not talented enough to win. It was an absolute line blender from start to finish. 27 different line combinations. If they would have won the game, like I said, it would have been an absolute miracle to come back from what happened in the first period to the captain of the team, to anyone, if that would happen to anyone on the team, if they would have won the game, it would have been an absolute miracle, let, let, let alone um, a guy that's as integral and as um, important to the team as John Tavares. If you don't want to say that they played well because they lost, um, I think we can compromise and say that they didn't play bad. Austin Matthews, Zach Hyman, William Nylander, Mitch Marner, Morgan Riley, the best players on this team played, and they played very well tonight. I should have said it. I should have said it during the regular season. I was reluctant to because I didn't want to kill the mood or the vibe or anything like that. But, and it's not a lack of talent. It's not a lack of skill. Um, and it's not a lack of effort or determination or anything like that. I love Rasmus Sandin. I love him. I got five of his young gun cards in my desk drawer. Wouldn't have bought those if I didn't think that he was going to be an extraordinary, amazing player. I just think that it's a thing where he hasn't had a lot of reps with the personnel. And the personnel has been flip-flopping constantly because the Toronto Maple Leafs' power play is a mess. I don't know how to say this without getting flamed. I've noticed a lot of his passes, they just they don't get into the wheelhouse of guys. And like I said, that's just a lack of reps. Eventually, that rust will break free, and I have no doubt in my mind that he's going to be just as effective or better than Morgan Riley. I'm not going to say anything about the shorthanded goal. Nothing. Not mentioning it. All right? Because I understand, and I don't want to harp on the guy too much. But there's a reason why Morgan Riley was out there with a minute or two left in the game quarterbacking uh, the 6-on-4 and then the 6-on-5 and not Rasmus Sandin. They either need to stick with it or they just need to figure something out. I don't really care what the personnel is on the power play. Just score. If you want to take a look at the underlying numbers from this game, the Maple Leafs win the shot attempt share of 58 to 42, basically. They lose the scoring chance share of 48 to 52. They lose the high danger shot attempt share of 45 to 55. But they win the expected goal of 54 to 45, 46, whatever. A relatively even, decent hockey game. But this is the way that Montreal wants to play, not the way that Toronto um, should be able to play against Montreal because they should be able to dictate the play because they should have fucking John Tavares. I don't know. What do you want me to say? Pittsburgh lost game one. Vegas lost game one. Um, it's just...
game one. And I'm leaving this to a little bit later in the video because of the conspiracy theorists, but do I think it was on purpose? No. Do I think it was accidentally on purpose? No. Do you have a right to be frustrated? Yes, of course. It's Corey friggin' Perry. Just because he's innocent this time around doesn't mean that the guy's been squeaky clean his entire career. And if you have to ask what that fight was about, that is both teams staring at something that was absolutely traumatic and then realizing that they have to play a hockey game with like 45 or 50 minutes remaining. And that's a fight between Nick Foligno and Corey Perry where they both kind of agree, okay, we have to play 45 or 50 more minutes here. Let's get both teams back into the game and focusing on hockey. Um, how do we do that the fastest that we possibly can? Let's just drop the gloves. And I guess to a certain extent, it's also Nick Foligno saying that, hey, that may have been an accident, but you're not going to take any liberties moving forward. The expectations going into this series was that it was going to be close. Even if it did end in five or six games with the Maple Leafs coming out on top, I didn't think for a second that they were going to win 4-1, 4-0, 3-0, um, you know, 5-2 in blowout fashion. No. I said that there was going to be a lot of one or two goal games in these series, and that's more than likely the way that's going to play out. Doing these videos have changed my fandom towards the team. Because it can't just get up here and huff and puff and uh, just, just expel hot air as much as you may think that that's what I do on a regular basis. Um, I know some people definitely feel that way. I can't do that, though. I have an obligation to look at the pros and the cons, the good, the bad, um, and try to find at least a little bit of optimism here because that's just what I'd like to do. I want you to enjoy um, the thing that you're choosing to spend your free time on. But at the end of the day, I will tell you if something is bad or if I think that something is good. And if the video is kind of all over the place, it's, I'm trying. This sucks. And out of the 27 different line combinations that the Maple Leafs used in this game, um, those were the four most common at 5-on-5. Five five. If you want to get Alex Galchenyuk in this lineup, I think it has to be with Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner. Um, Alex Kerfoot... Uh, playing second line center is not ideal. Him being your shutdown third line center is even worse. I don't necessarily think that he's a winger on a shutdown line either. I think that he's a middle six winger um, who needs to play in a scoring role. A lot of people might be saying, well, why don't you just throw Spezza up there on the second line? I mean, he's had a good season. He's produced in limited minutes. Um, I don't necessarily think it would be fair to do that to him, to ask that of him at this point. But I do think that you can mix him up and flip-flop him in Kerfoot, depending on the situation. You're not replacing John Tavares with Pierre Engvall, okay? You need some offense there. That's why Alex Galchenyuk is here. He's not playing in the bottom six. And it's just like, Zach Hyman, you need him too much now in the top six to justify putting him in the bottom six. So Nick Foligno, you are now on the shutdown line. But the truth of the matter also is, is that the Toronto Maple Leafs have a lot of interchangeable forwards to create flexibility in their lineup. They don't have someone that can replace John Tavares, though, and that's going to be a problem. But then again, nobody has the depth to survive not having John Tavares in their lineup, uh, aside from maybe the Tampa Bay Lightning. And that's only true because they're like $15 million over the salary cap at this point, or whatever the hell the number is. But let me know what you guys think. What are the lines going to look like for Game 2? I expect the Toronto Maple Leafs, no matter what the lines are like, to go into Saturday's game and win. All right? You got more time to figure out the line combinations. You got time. You don't have to work on the fly to figure out, and you don't have to roll with 27 different line combinations. Um, like I said earlier in the video, it would have been an absolute miracle if they would have won this game. And the fact that the game was within grasp for the Maple Leafs right down to the dying seconds of the game says all you need to know about the Montreal Canadiens. So that's it. I don't really have anything more to add to it. We'll see what they do in practice. Um, like I said, let me know what you would do down in the comment section down below. And make sure to leave me a like on the video if you did like it and subscribe for more because more is always on the way. Guys, that's just game one.